Hello YouTube subscribers and friends. I know it's been a while since I've made a video. Um, there's been just a lot of things going on in my life. And also I live in Alaska and it's summertime. So usually Alaskans tend to not focus on their fish tanks in the summer and play outside and work on their homes. So I have been slowly making some progress on this thing, just not like I do and not with the same amount of vigor as I do in the winter. So less videos, still had some progress. Um, and that also explains all the clutter in my garage. I've got building a fence, so got a lot of that going on. Got a new table saw, or it's actually my grandpa's old table saw who's passed away, and I brought this thing out from Wyoming. So doing some work on it to make it safe to use and cleaning it up. It's been really fun. I'm looking forward to it. Wish I had it when I was building this, but in the meantime, so we figured to do a little update on the things that have changed since the last time I made a video. The biggest thing that's changed is the temporary plumbing is complete. Uh, these are all just dry fitted, uh, cut to cut to fit, and just slipped in, no glue. Uh, right now, you can see that it's kind of held level with zip ties. I got to get some hose clamp or some some kind of system to secure these in place so the the weight of the plumbing with water in it isn't hanging on the bulkheads. Which, if you're new to aquariums, is these fittings right here that go through the glass. And if you don't support this piping, the weight is actually pulling down on the glass. So we're gonna find some way to transfer some of that weight. It'll probably be some kind of straps bolted onto here. Well, maybe I'm trying to make it look good, but it's probably gonna end up just being some. We'll see. I'm saying something janky, but I put so much effort into making this look good. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to keep on with that. And you can also see here where the this is the hole for the electrical panel. So the lights and the power heads, their cords will come out of here and come up and go around. Overflow box. Everything's happy. I mean, it, some people would say this is small for this tank, but there's also a lot of counter arguments that you really don't need a whole lot of flow in your sump. Um, not as much as people used to think. So I think this will be just fine. Um, yeah, very, very happy with this. Coming around to the front, I have some VCA 3D printed uh, random flow nozzles on the return lines, both sides. I have these on my BioCube and they do kind of make an alternating um, random flow. Very happy with them. So I've decided to bring them, put them on this tank. Um, they're not the cheap, they're not super expensive, but I wouldn't say they're cheap. They're between $20 and $30 a piece. So a little bit of money on these, but um, I think they'll be a good, good investment. So one of the things, if you're familiar with reef tanks and overflow systems, is that these are actually a bit low in the tank. And the problem with that is if you have a power outage, these will back siphon. So it will back siphon until it reaches this level and breaks the siphon. So wish I would have drilled these a little higher, but the higher you get to the rim, the less stable it is. So um, I have more stability with the hole in the glass panel as a whole with it being lower, but there's the added risk of um, overflowing your sump into your house. So you need to find a way to mitigate that. And what I did was two things. First, I've drilled a hole in the return lines here and put some simple black aquarium tubing that comes up to a T on both sides. What this does is if there is power outage, the water will drop. These will start to suck air and break the siphon. So each return has two, see I've got a T here, each return has two possible ways to get air. So as time salt creep will build up in these, I'll have to keep them clean, but there's actually four points here. And the theory is that any one of these four can break the siphon. Now, if that fails, I also have a second fail safe, which is a check valve down below. And we'll see that in a little bit. So basically five points that can potentially break the overflow or the, the overflowing my sum. So I'm a big fan of redundancy, as you can see. Okay, so going into the sump, still absolutely love those, by the way, how that turned out. You can see quite a bit of change down here. Let's see if they'll turn on now. So we've got lights now. 
motion activated. Oh, there's more about these. These are really cool. So they're, they're actually just held on with a magnetic strip. You charge them every once in a while with just USB and you can adjust the settings. They got a good amount of brightness. So they just clip right back up in there. There we go. Yep. Happy with those. Okay, so there's a bit to take in here. We'll just stick with the plumbing so far. So top line, that is the overflow. You see it comes down, we've got a gate valve right here. Adjust this to reduce the speed and fine tune it to get that gurgling noise out. Also got unions here. So when I need to take the sump out, I can just loosen that up. Uh, also have one here. This is the emergency overflow. Um, drains into the sump. You want to keep it just a little bit high so if it does start overflowing, you can hear the trickle sound and it will tell you that something's wrong. You'll be able to hear that the emergency is going. I'm probably going to cut this back. I don't know what the water level is going to be just yet. So, But you see we've got the union there so we can just pull it out and cut it later on. Uh, here's the return line. As you can see, here's our check valve. Now, a lot of people, uh, there's a lot of discussion about these check valves being problematic and failing at times. So this one is clear, so you can tell if it's not working. I'll have to periodically test it whenever I unplug it. If I see that plunger is not closing back down, I'll know it's not working. And then also for maintenance reasons, I've got a true union ball valve here. So if you're not familiar with these, I can close this like that. Now no water can get through or come out of the line. I can take this off and I can pull this out and service that without having to take too much of the plumbing apart. Um, there we go. And then also, you can see my return return pump. I've got an Ecotech. Um, no, what, what number is it? One second. Ecotech Vectra S2. It's a DC controllable return pump. Um, pretty affordable, actually, for Ecotech. Uh, I would like to have more Ecotech stuff especially their lights and their wave makers but we'll see the cost is pretty it is something to be considered yeah, we'll see we'll see how it turns out uh, the skimmer just recently picked up it is a aquamax um oh, what is it dc 120 yeah it's a dc 120 so it's a dc pump um yeah, <laughs> I spent a lot of time doing research on which skimmer to get. Um, there's not a whole lot of DC options for a tank this size. Uh, or DC, it's a DFC 120, sorry. You see the FC there? It's a D in front of it because it's a DC controllable. But anyways, there's not a lot of DC uh, skimmers for this size aquarium. There's a high door one that had very few reviews. And the few that were out there were kind of not, the, not great, just nothing too amazing. Uh, whereas this one, the non-DC version, just the FC120, has a ton of grid reviews. Uh, Aquamax is a great brand. So I felt more, more safe with getting this one. And the price was awesome. It was on sale. I bought it right when uh, Marine Depot was getting bought out by Bulk Reef Supply. So I got a little bit off on it. But I mean, there's some really cool features about this thing. This thing, the whole unit screws off. It's got a little handle back here so you can grab onto it. Um, has the the cone right there so the skim 8 comes up into the collection cup and kind of rolls over uh, it's also got these nice little uh, cones and yeah I'm just I'm really happy with it the only thing I don't like is that it's got blue accents it drives me crazy because you can see I've really tried my hard to go with red and white for everything and just the blue really clashes with that but it was just a compromise I had to make so that's where we're at with the sump uh, hoping to start getting ready to where I can glue it soon. Um, yeah. Just uh, needs to be winter so I have more time to play with this. We'll close that. Okay, on this side, not mostly kind of turned into storage for now. But what we're getting ready to work on today is I have cut out the pieces for the electrical box. I'm just going to pre-paint them before I put them in. You can see also I've got dosing, dosing pumps, dosing container. Uh, some of my equipment is just being stored in here. Still have some pretty significant purchases to go though. We still got to do wave makers and lights, which 
there's going to be quite the quite a bit of money need to be saved up. So you can see what I'm getting ready to do here. Uh, I use oil-based paint, so I've got my primer, got my boards prepped. These are, you know, got edge band, have edge banding around them on the finish sides. Um, really like a nice, <clears throat> fine, fine brush. Keep them clean, you know. So this is these are brushes that I used on when I painted this and did oil. Um, the stain and the oil-based paint, and you can see I just keep them real clean. Um, lots of mineral spirits to keep them this clean, but you just get a really good finish with them. Also, you know, oil-based paints. Got my vapor cartridges on my respirator. Can't smell a thing. Um, get some good ventilation going in my garage. And for my safety buddies out there, I'm a safety guy too, and I've got friends that watch this channel. I am drinking my drink before I start to apply paint so as to not consume it. So we just got to cover that because somebody will give me a comment. But that, that's, that's where we're at. And we're making steady progress. You guys should start to see a lot more videos coming out from me here in the next few months. But just wanted to let people know that the, it was not it has not been shut down. Work continues, just been at a different rate. Thanks for watching, and if this was your first video, you know, feel free to look back at my previous ones. It's kind of been a journey here, and I don't try to make my videos as how to do this. You know, this is just me documenting my journey with this new aquarium, this 90-gallon reef, and I hope you enjoy. Take care.